So I'm curious if you have ever converted a Jinhao to a flex pen using a dip calligraphy nib before, and if so, what your experience was like. I just ordered an X450. That's not a 450, that's a 450. And I can't wait to start experimenting. Okay, so the X450, X750, the 159, they all use the same number six size nib, except if you bought the number five size we had that was a weird mistake. Uh, those are gone now, but all the ones that we have now are number sixes. Um, they pull out, the nibs pull out of the pen rather easily. You can get number six size nibs. Uh, you can actually get gin, uh, uh, Noodler's Flex nibs. Um, that's a fountain pen nib. They, they take a little bit of cramming, but you can fit them in here. A lot of people have done that. Or uh, like you said, try a dip pen nib. Now, what is a dip pen nib? How is that different? Uh, why does that matter? Where do you get them? How much do they cost? All these questions are things that are running through your head. Uh, I do not sell them. I do not sell any dip nib dip pen products other than a glass pen is about the only dip thing that I sell. So I'm not super knowledgeable about dip nibs. I just know that they are typically made for calligraphy ink. Okay, calligraphy ink is thicker. It's usually shellac based. It is not intended for use in fountain pens. The ink is, uh, and it's, it's kind of a different breed. And it's meant to be, you know, you dip it, you write with it for a bit, you dip it again, every line or every couple of lines. If you have a little reservoir on the tip, that can help. Um, but you can get much, much flexier writing out of a dip pen. Partly because of the ink that's used, it's thicker and all this kind of stuff, it hangs on the nib. Partly is because the nib itself really is soft and bends and stuff like that. It's still a steel nib, um, but you're bending the living daylights out of it. They don't last that long, so you have to replace them constantly, but they're only a few dollars. So you're going through them, you're dipping a lot. It's very, it's a very kind of different experience, but if you're going for kind of that really elaborate, like Spencerian style script, you can just Google Spencerian and look at some images there if you want to see what it looks like. That's the kind of writing you typically do with a dip nib. Now, obviously, if you get the best of both worlds, that amazing dramatic flex on a dip nib with the convenience of carrying it around in your fountain pen, well, essentially, now you're just rewriting history because that's kind of how things were. You had dip pens first, then the technology of a portable ink reservoir in your pen ousted the uh, need for dip products and then you had this amazing portable inkwell you know that's kind of how they were marketed at first about you know late 1800s early 1900s when they started to become popularized and reliable enough to carry around that you know and then you know you had a lot of flex nibs that's part of why you see some of the best flex nibs happen in the early 1900s 20s and stuff like that is because there was still that writing style, kind of that Spencerian, very fancy kind of stuff. As the typewriter came out in the early 1900s, uh, it started to compete speed-wise with writing. So then Palmer came out with the Palmer cursive writing method, which is what is taught or has been taught in schools, at least until recently, and that is the modern cursive that we use as the Palmer method. So that Spencerian style, you needed that flex. Palmer does not need that. So you're seeing there's a little bit of history here, uh, which I really didn't even intend to cover. I didn't even put that in my notes. I just kind of went there. So you're getting a, some deep, deep knowledge here in the Goulet today. Um, but anyway, so if you want to recreate that and kind of get the best of both worlds, you can get your dip nib, you can get your fountain pen, put the two together, and you can get theoretically, that same flex with the convenience of the fountain pen. Now, that said, I have not really messed around with this too much myself, partly because it is a pretty well-known hack. Uh, and I say hack with a, uh, you know, with a, a raised eyebrow. You know, you can hack something. It just means to use something not originally as it's intended. That's my definition of hack anyway. You know, you're taking two different products, putting them together, it's a hack. Uh, so you can hack it together, uh, but I've seen videos of this, Stephen Brown's done it. I've seen some other YouTubers and other bloggers and stuff that have done it with success. Uh, it takes a little bit of modification, it takes a little bit of practice, it takes some tweaking, maybe some bending of different parts and stuff like that. So it takes some adjustments. So if you're doing that and you're getting a, you know, whatever pen, whatever pen that takes your nib, it's you're avoiding all the warranties from everybody because you're hacking stuff together and all that. You might ruin some parts, you may have to go through a few learning experiences and so on, that's just part of the game when you start messing around with things like this. Um, but that said, I've known a number of people that have done it successfully. Uh, it's not something that I openly am like, yeah, do it, and I'll guarantee it's gonna work. You know, I don't do that because it's, it really requires some tinkering. So you are welcome to try it. I think you'd have a blast. Jinhao's a great pen to do it with because it's cheap. 
and they're solid pens. You know, I will say that just in general, the, the feed that's on this Jinhao is made just for a, a regular fountain pen, just a small flow of ink. Typically, when you have a flex pen, something like a Noodler's pen that's designed for flexing, they design the feed with a wider channel so that more ink flows through because when you're flexing that pen out and you're getting a really wide swath, a big flow of ink through there, if you have this little narrow feed channel, it's not gonna keep up quite as well. So that's probably the number one thing that I see going on with these dip fountain pen conversions is it just doesn't keep up with the flow. You have to write really slow. You have to force ink down the feed all the time. You just gotta be ready for that and prepared. And when you're looking at a picture on Instagram and it looks awesome, you have no idea it took them 10 minutes to get it to look like that. Just be ready for that. Don't have unrealistic expectations and I think you'll have a blast.